That game plan was executed to perfection. Ran the ball and converted on third down. Flacco and those receivers in an offensive line, that's how you win football games. This is In the Nest with Bruce Bosner, proudly presented by Science and Kirk. Every Sunday morning at 9 on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Sit down with Bruce to analyze and take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game. All out and all in on three. One, two, three. All out and all in. Now, here's In the Nest on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome in, everybody. After a disastrous loss last week to Cleveland, in my eyes, Uh, The great thing about the NFL is we got another game today. Last week is history, and you got to look on the bright side that if they could pull the win today in an almost pick em type game, they come home four and two after having four games on the road. Carl Science is is in the house today. Donald's out, but Barry Levinson is in from uh, his home. Is it Manhattan or Connecticut? Uh, in uh, New York. It, you're yeah. in New York now, okay. Today, today, yes. Have you moved to New York? I, I heard you bought an apartment there or something. Yeah, we got a uh, we have a place here, and so we spend more time here than um, I originally thought, because we have a place in Connecticut. Yeah, but you know what? There's no place like New York, all right? No, it's pretty special. You know, and. Uh, Maybe you could go wait in line for Springsteen tickets tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Bar- Barry Levinson can't get tickets to Springsteen. Right? Why would you call him? Do you know him? <laughs> I've met him a few times, but uh, I'll figure this out. I can't believe I had tickets and uh, got the days mixed up. That's the greatest because I'm, I'm ready to go one day late. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. It happens. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. That was your bad. That was your bad thing for the year. That's that's, that's, that's yeah, that, Barry, that, that's unbelievable. Too bad. Barry, that's how you beat yourself, which is what <laughs> yes. we saw. Which is what we saw the Ravens do last week. Let's. let's and how many times have they done that? By the way. Yes. Let's talk about the what do they call it? The elephant in the room, and that is seven straight quarters without a touchdown. Yes, after the, the amazing NFL record, thirteen for thirteen in the red zone. Street. Right. Uh Looking like last year, check down, check down. But the worst thing of all was the drop oh, well, in the end zone to win the game by Michael Crabtree. That probably well, look. That probably was the worst part. There was there was four right, four things they did to beat themselves: interception at the goal line, horrible. Right? Um, yep. The blocked field goal, which is the only way that Missed Tucker misses. Missed assignment by Nick, by Nick Boyle. What happens? The drop in the end zone. Well, that was number one, and then and then the, I thought non penalty on that running play in the overtime, Collins had a long run, put us in field goal range. You know what they're calling so questionable. Many pe- they're calling so many block penalties. in the back call. Yeah, but they had eleven so, penalties on, on Cleveland. Cleveland. And two I know, on us. I know. You know, but that's th- th- but that's four ways they beat themselves last week. Yeah, you yeah, know, and, for and that sure. it, and it's unfortunately the thing about Harbaugh and the whole last ten years, it seems like. We don't get blown out very often. It feels like when we lose, we beat ourselves at least 75% of the time. It's a good point. Minus that Jacksonville yeah. game. Which is really year. frustrating. But how oh. are your take on last week? Well, you know, I think you have to look at the Ravens, you know, in the overview. Um, you know, every time we think, you say, well, well, this team has finally got it together. You know, we fall apart. We've done it year after year after year. So, oh, we, now we've got it together. This team is now we're on our way, and then all of a sudden we, we collapse. And we do it every year, year after year. So you keep saying, is there something fundamentally wrong with this team? Because you keep thinking they're better, and they can be, and they're, but they're erratic in that way. There's no way in the world we should have lost that game. No way that I can see to say that team is a better team than us. So we lose the teams that are inferior to us every single year, and it's hard to figure out. Well, let's give the Browns a little credit. Their defense was excellent. And uh, Baker Mayfield did what <laughs> Joe Flacco was unable to do. He was a one-man show. All right, was the, He generated a drive. All right, and I saw some statistics on Baker Mayfield today that would just knock your eyes out as far as the improvement of the offense as he's taken it over. You know, yeah, but the— but Bruce, they only scored twelve points. Nine, nine in regulation. But you got to win that yeah. game. But you have right, to remember, so the, the Ravens are arguably the number one defense in football, or certainly the top three. 
and and you know you're not going to score. They've only got given up what sixteen a game or something. So Baker Mayfield did what he had to do to win. He got a touchdown. He produced the winning drive. You know, Look, take take the top expert in football and say, do you think that the Ravens will only score nine points against the Browns? You know, I mean, it, it's inconceivable right. that we could do that that uh, week. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's extraordinary. It's unexplainable. But, but Barry, is it, it is what you see it is. In other words, yeah. they got nine points. That's all they got. They had opportunity after opportunity. Flacco, once again, could not generate... A winning drive for a field goal. A field right. goal. I mean, that's it's inconceivable. And uh, you know, not only a we had all not our only, weapons. Not, last only, week. not only a winning drive for a field goal, but you've got a kicker that you don't have to. You I don't mean, have to come. Field that, goal range is what? Yeah, you you yeah. get within the 40? the forty yard line, and Justin Tucker Ugh. is you know. Would you take him for a 56-yard field goal to get us into the Super Bowl one play? Of yes. course you would. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's yeah. He, he's got it. But uh, what are you going to do? They lost, and you got to move on. And listen, and we the, talked about it last week, and I made a statement, and I even texted Barry about it. I said, between the Cleveland game on the road and the Titans game on the road, Let's make sure we win one we of those one. games. Right. All right, because you come up four and two, to all of a sudden, uh, the new, uh, the newest guy on Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks, Drew Brees, yeah. who was just, his stats. Barry, I'll let you talk about Drew Brees. All right. You're the elder <laughs> statement, statesman here. What do you, I mean, he's incredible. Just he's incredible. Well, look, what is there, there are a few, you know, great quarterbacks that come along, and he's one of them. I mean, year after year after year, he'll, he, he's got a determination that in tough situations, somehow he pulls those games out. He's never necessarily been with great teams or, uh, and the support that he deserves, but he's, he's exceptional. I think if you had to say, there's Drew Brees, uh, Drew, uh, Drew Brees, and here's Flacco. Flacco has not risen to the occasion except – and we won that when we won the Super Bowl. But year in and year out, Flacco disappoints. It's a, it, it is too many years have now gone by when we when we haven't delivered when we should have. Where a guy like Breeze, I don't know how he does it. He scrambles. He does things. He's not a great runner. He has an amazing arm, and he has an intelligence, and that's tough to beat. No doubt about it. Here's here's his stats as of now: seventy two thousand one hundred three yards <laughs> passing first. All time, uh, 63.7, uh, 6,370 completions, that's first. And 499 <laughs> touchdowns, that's fourth. And, wow. uh He is just uh, a marvel, and uh, they did a great tribute to him on Inside the NFL. Uh, Barry, I don't know if you watch that on HBO. Is it Showtime now? Yeah, it's Showtime. Showtime. What a, what a great... What a great one-hour wrap-up show it is. I mean, you got Ray Lewis and uh, Phil Sims and Boomer Isaacson, and they just tell it Did like you it say is. Boomer Isaacson? Isaacson. <laughs> Isaacson. Yes. You're right. I'm a Maryland guy. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Bruce. I should get three whips for that. <laughs> yes. All right. Boomer was, Boomer was great. Great for Maryland. Great in the NFL. But yeah. uh, So now... The Ravens' journey on to Tennessee today. A mirror image. A mirror image, mirror image game team. last week. Uh, this, uh, the Titans had a mirror image game against the Bills last week. Yeah. Uh, they lost 12-9. to nine. It was a same right? score. It was 12-9, wasn't it? Unbelievable. No, it was 13-12. Uh, 13-12 to to they lost. Right. right. Uh, but here's a game. It's certainly a preseason. You mark it down as a win in your calendar. You did? Oh, yeah. This, this game this week? This game this week. Oh, I'm the opposite. Last week I had as a win. This week I had as a loss. Preseason. I don't remember. Because I don't if really... I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure Carl had the Ravens going 16. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's shtick. That's called shtick. 15 and 1. I don't remember no 15 and 1. That's for called shtick, okay? 15 and 1 would that's be right. embarrassing. But the, <laughs> but the right. Titans are, were a playoff team last year. Which yeah. is why today is, number one, today's huge for that reason. The whole wild card thing. Right. 
you know, you want that tiebreaker over them. They just haven't been impressive this year. No. Some the Ravens are two and a half points favorites on the road I was today. shocked by that. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, the, the, that means if they were at home, it'd be about, what, four and a half or five and a half. The Titans beat Jacksonville this year, guys, and they beat the Eagles this year. They're very tough at home. Yeah. yeah. All right. They've won 12 out of 13 out of the last games at home. The sport, you know, sports writers uh, up here in New York, only one pick the Ravens to win this game out of 10. I really? Believe it. I really? believe it. Hey, speaking of New York, what do, what, do the, what do the papers, I don't read the Post that much, but what do the papers have to say about uh, Odell Beckham and what he did, his his tirade against uh, Eli Manning? Uh, you know, they've been, they've been critical of him, as they should, uh, and, his, and his behavior in general. I mean, his behavior is that you think there must be something wrong with him because you know, punching a uh, air conditioning unit or something like that, and you know, leaving before the halftime uh, in the game this past week. I mean, his behavior is just—it uh, it indicates that unfortunately there's something you know wrong with him, not just simply uh, a guy who got angry over a play or something like that. I, I, I think there's some real issues with him. Saquon Barkley had to calm him down. Though that seems like it's yeah. that seems like it's backwards. Yeah. Right? Boy, Barkley yeah. had a coming out party in a law. I know it was a loss, but boy, did he look good the other night. He's great. There's no oh. issue about that. But uh, absolutely, there's yeah, no. absolutely. I mean, that's the one thing you have to say about the Ravens that they have not had a breakout player in a long time. And uh, you know, you have to say, so what team can actually go all the way without uh, basically a star? If you want to call it that, but you got to have a quarterback, and uh, Eli- well, you got to have a quarterback. But I mean, you have to have a you have to have a major impact player. Ravens haven't had that in a long time. I'm going to let uh, our producer uh, produce one of his theories that he espoused to me yesterday, and I okay. thought it was on the money. Danny, tell him the Lamar Jackson saga for the Giants. Well, the plan was basically once the Giants took Saquon Barkley that they were banking on taking a quarterback high in the second round. And once the Patriots passed on Lamar Jackson, it looked like all signs pointed to Lamar Jackson going to the Giants to become their quarterback. Because obviously the Eagles weren't going to take him. Right, exactly. And, and, right. And, and the theory is that the Ravens went to the Eagles and was like, listen, you either trade with us or you're facing Saquon Barkley and Lamar Jackson for the next 10 years. And uh, the Eagles made the trade. It was, and as Bruce said yesterday, it was a great deal for both. It looks like the uh, Eagles gather some good assets, and the Ravens hopefully have the quarterback of their future. Amazingly true, I think, Barry. It could be. Uh, yeah, amazingly oh, that's, that's true. Where did, I, where did you read that? Did you come upon that someplace? The, or? So it, it's, a, it's a mix of things. The, the report was always that the Giants were hoping that whoever the fourth or fifth best quarterback of the class was going to drop to the beginning of the second round. And uh, we, we, we've heard a lot of uh, fan theories about uh, what exactly went down. There has been no reporting that they actually went to the Eagles and said that about the Giants, but that's the theory that, listen, if the Ravens didn't trade up, Lamar Jackson would be a Giant right now. I can hear Eric DaCosta saying those exact Me too. words. I love right? that. And uh, look, the, the Giants proved it by taking the quarterback from, from Richmond, Richmond, exactly. All right, as their first pick uh, in the second round. In the second round. So obviously, mm-hmm. you know, they would have taken Lamar Jackson over him, but uh, you know, their loss was our gain. And uh, yeah. uh, here's the next thing about the Ravens. I don't know if you read about it, Barry, but Joe Flacco's wife <laughs> criticized Flacco. Yes. For looking so stupid when he stands out there on, on the, as the lonesome end. Yes. But I'm going to ask Carl. Why and rightly so, f- by the way, for her to criticize him. Cause right. I was, watching, I was watching that and go, what is he doing? It doesn't even look like, he looks like he's just standing there waiting for the play to be over. Correct. That's what he's doing. But yeah. I'm going to ask Carl, why don't they take him out of the game and put in a real player? I don't know why you can't just sub him out. I don't understand why. Why? I don't get it either. I mean, are they thinking, well, maybe it's going to hurt the next play? And Is that much more complicated to, to cover I, I don't understand what's going on? Nobody I don't get it either. No. I don't know what the is. I don't is. understand it. I have no clue what that's about because it's not like you're going to do some trick play. He's just sort of a wasted player standing Correct. out there. He said, he said his response was that he's not running downfield because if they threw him the ball or whatever, there's going to be nine guys out to kill him. Because he's an open target. And, but why not just run to the corner of the end zone and stand there? 
You know what I mean? Of course. When I yeah. play, At least be a decoy. When I played fraternity football, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't that great. You know what they used to tell me? Just run to the end zone, and maybe they won't guard you. No lie. And you carried, and the, 12, and you carried the 12 pack and with guess you? guess what? One game, I caught a big touchdown. All right. Because nobody guarded me. You did. Me. Nobody guarded me. All right? <laughs> did you act like you belonged to the end zone? Did you act like you have been there before? Oh, or, I or always did, you did dance but around? after, after like, the quarterback never even looked in my direction for the <laughs> entire game. And this is a league where there is no running. It's all passing. All right? I was an end. It shows you how short we were on uh, manpower. <laughs> Speaking of that, Barry, I don't know if you hear it, but uh, across the country, there have been cancellations and forfeits because it's getting harder and harder to field a high school football team of players. There's so much uh, concussion backlash that it's getting kind of, like, ridiculous as far it, as... Go ahead. Yes, it... it What's that? What, what uh, player that he didn't want his son to um, to go into uh, to play uh, football? I forgot too, who that was recently. There's too many of them. All right, I know yeah. it, uh, a point was made lately, but uh, you know, I mean, I I told my son, I said, don't ever, uh, my son and my son-in-law, I said, if you ever want to let them play football, you wait until I'm nine feet under, because I don't ever want to have to go watch a kid play. Um, my, yeah. my, my dad, did, scary. Donald, did not want to see his grandson, Blake, play football. You know, look, no. it can happen in soccer. It can happen in lacrosse. It can happen even in baseball. But it's so much less likely. Yeah. You know, you know I, I have always said my theory, uh, which people think is too crazy, is that <clears throat> you, <clears throat> you take away the face mask, uh, you change the nature of the game. Because when the face mask came in, then you used your head because you knew you weren't going to get, you know, a broken nose or whatever. And now because you're in a cage and you're protected and you throw your head. If you don't have a face mask, you do not use your head. And if you look at the old footage, and I think I mentioned this before, you look at the old footage of, of players, they were always getting to the shoulder. Everything was with the shoulder, not with the head. And, and I know it sounds crazy. You can end up with a broken nose. But you don't have that kind of collisions of, he- of helmets smashing into one another, which is the way it is now. And that changed when the face mask came into being. Uh, without question, it, it, it parallels in some sports. Women's lacrosse, they do not wear helmets because they felt they feel like if they wear helmets, they'll be hits to the head in the helmet. I mean, it, <laughs> it's... Uh, I don't know what the answer is, but something's got to be done about football because the amount of talent is getting depleted. But I guess there will always be kids who want to play. And uh, I just, not my grandkids, that's all. I mean, it's that simple. I just, uh, I could not deal with watching it whatsoever. Well, uh, no, look, everybody's afraid of that idea that, you know, you're, there's too much evidence that this, these kinds of constant collisions, uh, you know, with your head is, is ultimately dangerous. So, when, when this goes out and, you know, families are saying, I don't know, I don't want my, uh, I don't want my kid playing football, it's going to have a profound effect in the next decade. Uh, so if you're saying they can't feel the full team now, what's it going to be like in another decade? There's Unless a, they come up with some, some kind of revision a new helmet to stop or something. that. Yeah. Well, they certainly have enforced the rules a lot more to the point where it, it's getting to be an absolute joke, some of these games with the penalty. And that's why you, there's so many penalties, you just can't complain about one. But we're way past that break. We'll be back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300 within the nest with Barry Levinson and Carl Science today. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Hey, that's what happens when you stay with it. Way to be patient, baby. Good job. Go! With Bruce Posner on CBS Sports Radio 1300, we're taking a close look at the upcoming Ravens game. Hey, <laughs> now, once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, back here on segment two. And I'm going to change the subject a little bit. We're going to stay in football. All right, no baseball talk, although these playoffs are fantastic. Good, good, good this Fantastic yeah, stuff. But the new thing now, the new trend is to go for it on fourth down when it matters it's numbers it's, they, they they do all the same you know, metrics yeah all the, exactly or whatever you want to call yep. it but last week last week fourth and one 
when they needed another first down for a, uh, to get field goal range in overtime, Dallas punted. All right? And, yeah. And wow, they're getting blitzkrieged over it. And, you know, you have to dare to win to win these days. You just, look, Belichick's been doing it forever. Yep. And Harbaugh's in that Harbaugh's school been of thought doing now. It for, absolutely, he's been but doing it. But you just have to accept the fact that it's not always going to be successful. Right. And live with the results. But uh, fourth and one, the Rams went for it in their own territory. Harbaugh's done that. To preserve victory. Jared Goff ran, you know, took right. a quarterback sneak and made and made first. You had and, and this was on inside the NFL, and they were all talking that you have to be risk aggressive. Yep. And uh, play Ray, to win. Ray Lewis would uh, said that he would always go to Billick and Harbaugh and say, "Go for it. If you don't make it, we'll do something to help." Right. All right. Just go for it. And Barry, I think it's uh, I think it's helped the game a lot. Well, I mean, you know, it, it certainly makes it exciting. In, in the case with Dallas, how much time was left in the game? It was overtime. Yeah. It, so how much? How much? Um, oh, I, I was, think it was early in overtime. And, was it? I yeah. thought it was. I thought there was only a, a not that much time. But it's only ten minutes overtime, right? Yeah. I, I think it's exciting to go for it. Why not? I mean, you know, to play it safe nowadays doesn't necessarily uh, pay off. No, so I think being aggressive works. No, it doesn't. And uh, it's funny. I was at a party, not a party, but I was with about 10 friends watching the game. And here's how it went. All right. This as we're watching the game with about four minutes left and we had the ball or three minutes left. I said, who right now would take overtime with the way we were playing? Because we needed a field goal and everybody raised their hand. All right, and we got the overtime after Crabtree dropped the ball. Yep. And then when we yep. punted with two to three minutes left, who would take a push right now? Everybody raised their hand. Yeah. So you can't play for a tie. You can't play safe today, or else you'll be on the outside looking in. And th- and that's why I thought Baker Mayfield was great with that drive that took them down the field to get the field goal. Say whatever you want about him, but that drive, he did what Flacco was unable to produce. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, not being elusive enough, not being, you know, able to get outside and stuff like that. And that's when you start to look at Lamar Jackson. And Lord knows, if you're going to try and test to see how Lamar Jackson is, let him play a series. I mean, this is ridiculous. He's thrown, what, two passes all year. Who's going to get their rhythm in, in one pass every other week? It's ridiculous. They're definitely, I, it's hard yeah. to understand. I don't understand what they did. They bring him in for those kind of like trick plays, and, and it's some kind of run. You're right, but some kind of a pass because that at least would throw the other team off. I think they're I sort mean, of no, he's not going to pass. Um, so those plays don't necessarily uh, uh, become productive. I mean, have a red zone package for him. I mean, I could look if you're the two yard line, bring him in. Listen, first and goal from the eight yard line. Put him in right now, today. Would you rather have Flacco or Lamar? The promise and the uh, what I assume Lamar can do, I'd rather have Lamar. We don't know. We haven't seen it yet, right? If we, in other words, if they don't try, but that skill set makes a lot of sense for that position. You know, if they don't try it, what happens? We wind up kicking a field goal like every other time. But in yeah. other words, maybe if they let him try it three or four times, a rhythm develops, you know, because it kind of reminds me, I said it yesterday, when the Ravens won their last Super Bowl, you know, I thought Jim Harbaugh blew it because he never let Kaepernick run. Yeah. That was Kaepernick's, right. that right. was Kaepernick's main feature of his game. And instead, what did they do? They tried three, you know, three wide out, you know, uh, yeah, fades to, to Crabtree. Crabtree. That's right. All right, and not one of them was even close. Nope. So you know, to me, to me, if you're going to use them, then use them. Uh, in other words, yeah. why, why not? Well, they do. I say, mean, what was that play when the Flacco was standing around? Uh, you know, <laughs> as like some kind of wide receiver. Uh, that, you know, th- that play made no sense at all. Right. You wasted. You wasted it down. In the red yeah. zone, and right. you, uh, to me, you just can't do that. But I don't have but, any you know, problem. The Bruce. The one thing is, going back to it, the the Ravens have consistently over the years uh, 
when things are not working, they are hard to adjust, it seems to me. You know, I, I'm not an expert on it, but they don't seem to find a new way where other teams are having a problem, and then they switch to another strategy uh, offensively or defensively to compensate. We don't seem to do well on the fly. We don't, and you know what, this this Steeler victory, you know, it was such a trap last week, Barry. After they beat the Steelers, all of a sudden they were three or four in the power ranking, and we're thinking Atlanta, and yeah. we're thinking, yeah. we're th- and then, and then the bandwagon, you know, right? And then all of a sudden they become the Ravens again. I'm sorry, Eric Weddle. Yeah. All right, you have no, to pull that true. up again. But uh, they become the Ravens. We again. are the same old Ravens. We are the same old Ravens, <laughs> and. and, but, and if they do it again this week, they'll lose. Well, but the Titans are the same old Ravens, too. Yeah. I mean, these guys are, except the Mariota can run the ball a bit, but they're mirror images. They, they, they both teams, they sometimes they look like they're stuck in the mud offensively. Well, once again, it can be really frustrating. last week, Barry, 56 passes produces a loss. And I, yep. I'm not sure. Now, you saw the Browns stick with the run because Todd Haley says if you do nothing about except throw the ball against the Ravens, you're going to lose. And even when it was like first and 10, it was second and eight, then it was third and six, and they had to punt the ball. And wow, do they have a punter. But uh, they stuck with it no matter what. They stayed in the game, and uh, the Ravens don't stick with the run. They just don't. And that's my concern about will they be able to out-ugly Tennessee today? And that's what they're probably going to have to do to win. And, and, and it's the frustrating thing is the Ravens are great at playing ugly, but is it ever by design? And, and as Barry said, the, the lack of adjustment when it comes to a game plan, at least whatever they're going into the game with, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the way that the whole offense has been... Uh, designed this year has been with these uh, very much over-the-top plays, some stretch runs, and this is going to have to be a lot more of a smash-mouth game today, and that's where I'm concerned, because the Titans seem to be a lot more okay with embracing that uh, identity on offense. All right, before we uh, end this segment, I want to do a few minutes on, to me, the two big games, actually the three big games today, and the number one game, 820 tonight, will all be in front of our TVs, because Kansas City's going to New England, and uh, we're going to see a classic shootout tonight, Carl. A classic. Yeah. I think that game can hit the 60s tonight total. I'm still not sold on the Patriots. I still think they're a mirage. Six interceptions bothers you from Brady, but yeah. he's kind of turned it around. I, and, I, I, I don't uh, buy him. I, I think Kansas is going to win by 14. Really? Yep. Barry, your take. I, I think this kid is, as I said last week, this kid is as good as any uh, quarterback I've seen in a long, long time. And so <clears throat> I'd have to go with Kansas City because I, I, this guy is like a magician. The, the, the way he's able to, uh, you know, avoid tacklers and throw the ball. And, you know, uh, it's extraordinary. So I, 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 I can't imagine... New England being able to deal with him, even as good as, you know, what's interesting is Belichick always comes up with some kind of plan, you know, uh, because he hasn't, he doesn't have a great team, but somehow the brilliance of that uh, coach, he pulls certain games out. So I think it might be, uh, this would be an interesting game to to watch um, because I think Kansas City's got a, a, is more talented right now. Well, let me say this to you, Pat, uh, Patrick Mahomes threw two interceptions last week. And if you don't think that Bra- uh, that Belichick and his defensive coordinator haven't picked that apart and seen if there's any tendencies, you're wrong. And he's the greatest at that. And you, yeah. al- you always say you're not. he's not going to let the best player on the other team beat him. And today is Patrick Mahomes. Maybe he has a three-man rush. Maybe he gives up. I don't up know. The, maybe he but gives up the amazing? run. He's ama- his strategy, week in and week out, is pretty amazing for a team that's not that great. Yeah. So uh, today I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with the Patriots just on the Belichick factor. And the other game that I think is a dynamite game is Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. And it, obviously it has effects on us. And also San Diego and Cleveland. I think Cleveland's going to stomp them today. Sandy, really? well, yeah, I really do. I think that uh, Cleveland's favorites at home. Yeah, I think they're going to stop them. I really, I think that that win last week gives them so much confidence. And folks, we have a four-team conference now. It's no longer a three-team conference. No, but the, division. But, you mean division? But, but, but you the Bengals. I mean, the, the Bengals could really make a statement today. 
Yeah, yeah they could. And, and, and Mervyn Lewis was on, I mean, he was on the hot seat, or what, last year. I mean, I think yeah. everybody was shocked he came back, right? Well, when they win the division and lose the playoff game again, we'll be having the I same know. old question. I know. But he hasn't won a playoff game yet. Yeah. He hasn't won a playoff game yet. It's, That's amazing. It's unbelievable. It? Yeah. It, it's it's beyond <laughs> yeah. comprehension. Yeah. But uh, do are we Steeler fans today? Do we want to see? We have to be a Steeler fan today. Because Cincinnati could run away with this I know. thing. They win today, and uh, the Ravens... Yeah, they lose. If, they, if the Ravens, Ravens lose today... Ravens split the next yeah. two games, which is probably po- very possible. Yeah. Uh, wow, the Cleveland's got a, a commanding lead. There's a lot of early must-win games in the league this year. It seems like no team is really sure of how good or bad they are. Even three and two teams feel like they're two or three, just you know, one bad loss away from being, from being you know three and six. Yeah. And uh, I think the Ravens are absolutely in that pool. I mean, like think about how different this season would be if they won that Bengals game or if they lost that Steelers game. I mean, it, it, no, my it, lord, if they lost the Steelers game, it'd be uh, panic right now. Yeah. Two and three going into another yeah. road game. Maybe be L- yeah. Lamar Jackson watch would be on. You know what? <laughs> Full bore. I might like them more if that if they were two and three than you know, three and two. If I, you know, I like desperate teams. Right. You know, desperate teams. You saw it last week with the Steelers. You know, and uh, look, Miami was three and zero. Oh, went into New England. You know, w- this is it. We're going to turn things around. Thirty eight zippity doodah was the final yep. score. <laughs> All right, with that, we're going to head out to break number two. It's Bruce Posner here with Carl Science and Barry Levinson, and I'm sure Donald's listening at home. So, Donald, we miss you. I'm sure we'll see you next week, uh, which is going to be a change. We'll talk about that when we come back here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. What's this? A special song? Yeah, I guess this is the uh, who, whoever scheduled the show scheduled the outbed as the rejoin music. So well, uh, you should have said, "All right, we're here." Yeah, all right, <laughs> all right, all right, all in on three. Hold one, on, two, three. Hold on, all in. Three. All right, all right. Back here with Carl and Barry Levinson for our final segment, and uh, here we go, guys. Uh, let's take a look at Tennessee. And when we say Tennessee, we say Marcus Mariota. The dinged up Marcus Mariota. I, you know what's funny? He's got a bad shoulder or elbow or something, right? I don't know. but His, he's got his wheels are still working, though. Yeah. All Although right. he didn't run last week. Here's the, here's my question, Danny, injury list or roster list. Uh, Cyrus Jones, is he activated for today? He is. All right. Now he looks like he's the primary punt returner as well. All right. I tell you what, you don't want to Until do. Until he fumbles. You don't want to fumble. <laughs> Barry, Until one fumbles. fumble and you're cut. <laughs> they cut yeah, this guy, Tim, who was it? So it was well, two, two guys so far, right? Yeah, Janarian, uh, Gen- Janarian Grant, Grant, the Rutgers guy, and, 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 Tim, and Tim White. White. Now, White's back when the practice oh, right, squad. Right. <clears throat> they took you him know? back. Yeah, they brought him back in the practice squad. But Cyrus Jones, of course, he had his issues with fumbling with the uh, Patriots. Did he really? Yeah. He did. That's, uh, last year, when he, or I, I guess it was uh, two years ago, maybe, when he was a rookie, uh, he was signed to be the primary punt returner for the Patriots, and he had a lot yeah. of fumbling issues. Bill Twice Belichick, against the Ravens. Man, Belichick called him out ruthlessly in, in the media, ended up cutting him. Uh, they ended up signing him from the Ravens practice squad earlier this year, and then they cut him again, and here he is on the active roster for today. Unbelievable. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm not sure if you saw it, but Prashad Perriman looks I like know, he, the yeah, Browns. Said Prashad, the Browns. Can you believe that, Barry? <laughs> yeah, how about that? How crazy is that? We're in, uh, we're in trouble now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that just you know, right. set the Browns back. But, Listen, yesterday... I think it was Michigan, or maybe it was Penn. I don't remember who it was now, but some quarterback threw a pass to a wide receiver, and he literally caught the ball with one hand. Mm. Literally. Went down for a touchdown. And when he got to the end zone, you know what he did? He pretended like to throw the ball down, and it wouldn't move like it was stuck oh, to Stephon his hands. Yeah. Stephon Day's commercial. Yeah, Stephon Day's That's commercial. Good. That's funny. It was great. But uh, are the hands getting bigger? Is there like a new thing to grow your hands? How is it all these guys are making one-handed catches today? They practice them now. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It, b- b- yeah. Back in the day, coaches, uh, football coaches would probably not let kids practice like that because you want to use two hands. You want to catch it fundamentally right. But now Odell Beckham, kind of like Steph Curry is teaching kids to shoot 40-foot jumpers now in basketball. You know, Odell Beckham is um, making those crazy catches. I still think the most amazing thing is those, that when they get the toes in on the sideline. Oh. It's still it just but that's something they practice amazes so much. me. But, they, that's still, but that skill still to me is... 
beyond beyond belief. So today is a Gilman game. All right, you got Cyrus Jones playing for the Ravens, <laughs> and you got Darius Jennings playing for kick, uh, both, yeah, both kick returners. Yeah, You're right. and Darius You're right. Jennings. If you guys, he, Barry, I'm sure you don't know, but he no. was he must have gained <laughs> eighteen thousand yards for Gilman. All right, this guy, and, really? he's got, and he's got a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Yeah, does he? Earlier and, this and season, yeah. He ran. He was a quarterback, a running quarterback when Gilman was in its heyday, and he was like absolutely incredible. And uh, Cyrus Jones. Obviously went to Alabama instead of Maryland. What else is new? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know he's you know you sit there and you watch Dwayne Haskins last night for Ohio State threw for four hundred yards. Thought about Maryland went to Ohio State. Yep. Isaiah Prince their tackle thought about Maryland went to Ohio State. If we could just keep keep the guys home, we'd be great. But anyway, outside of that, they got Malcolm Butler, the controversial guy from the uh, from the that Patriots. Belichick yeah, blew the Super well, Bowl Vra- over. Well, Vrabel's the coach, right? Well, so you know he's he's got a New England uh, excellent Ryan suck up. And by the way, is is there a great uh, kickoff return guy now? In the I league, I can't think of yeah, I can't think of one. The whole sport has been ruined because I'm it's, yeah, you. it's just not as much of a factor. Just don't fumble. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's about what it comes down to. And uh, unless the kickoff is short, you know, it's almost a waste yeah. of time to bring it out anymore. It, it's basically these big time wide receivers who still randomly show up as a punt return. Like when Deshaun Jackson randomly goes out there to return a punt, he's probably really the only guy who still has that name recognition as a returner. Well, there's talk about letting uh, John Brown return kicks to Willie Snead also, but I, Chris Moore does a decent yes, job he does. of it. I don't know why they just don't go with him. As, uh, Jerry Rosberg was asked about that this week, and there, there seems to be a lot of uh, humming and hawing about uh, reasons why. It's, it seems that they really do want to preserve Chris Moore at, at, and John Brown's health, especially John Brown, who has yeah. had a health issues his entire career. It's been a miracle that he's been able to survive five weeks of the season without really any sort of big bumps in the road. Uh, knock on Don't wood, seriously. Don't put the kiss of death right. on him, man. Yeah, yeah, right, sorry. Listen, by the way, Spooky Brown, though, he, right, he disappeared this past week uh, against the Browns. 14 targets, though. They did target him a lot, but they were blanketing him. Yeah. You know? well, which is why, why Crabtree was open. Him, yeah. You would assume that somebody was open to throw to if they're targeting him. But, uh, you know, look, the great receivers somehow get, get loose. Right. You know, we target A.J. Green. He keeps getting, uh, he keeps <laughs> getting loose against us all, all, every time we ever face him. No doubt. But, uh, but yeah. Tennessee doesn't have – they really are a lot like the Ravens. They just don't have a lot of offensive firepower, any skill position guys that scare you. Here's my theory they, they, about the they, Titans. They win by grinding it out. Here's my theory about yeah. the Titans, and I could bet you, me, and Barry are in the same ball game, or probably Donald as well. Uh, if you're not a gambler, and none of us are gamblers, Donald, you know, is kind of iffy, but <laughs> none of us are real gamblers, and I don't think any of us play fantasy football. Maybe you do. I, I do don't a know. little bit, yeah. Okay, why watch the Titans? In other words, I don't watch the Titans. In other words, first of all, their their game is never on the national broadcast. And they're even secondary on the red zone. This is Bruce complaining about his show prep. This has been a boring week for show prep or in the nest. Right. In other words, <laughs> like when you play like New Orleans, I can't wait to talk about him next week. Right. What are we going to do against Drew Brees? How are we going to, you know, what are we going to, but what do you say about the Titans? You know? Look, you say look in the mirror. You say Ravens look in the mirror. But you know you've got you've got Dion Lewis and, and Derrick Henry in the backfield. None of them, Derrick neither Henry's of them scare good, you. I, I know, mean, but he's but he's having a Collins like season. Just the same season the Collins is having, Derrick Henry's having. And Dion Lewis has not looked the same since he left the Patriots. No. Nobody does when they right, leave the that's Patriots. True. You that's know? true. Even Wesley Walker well, went well, downhill. Well, look how Josh Gordon looks now that he's on the Patriots. How about that? Yeah, which yeah, but that's an accident waiting to happen. Unfortunately, I hope not. Yeah. I hope he straightens out. But uh, yeah, don't. Uh, I wouldn't be counting on him. Well, <laughs> Stephen A. Smith said it right that he doesn't belong with the Patriots. Yeah. He belongs in counseling. Right. All right. And uh, you know, to to me, that's on the you know that's dead on the money. But uh, how do you see the game going today, Carl? Uh, I I do think the Ravens have more talent than the, than the Titans. I really do, and I, I think that they'll come out much more. They got to come out focused at the beginning of this game. Last week, they really I thought they were dominating. The, I thought they dominated the first quarter and a half of that game last week. Uh, but but you looked up, it was three nothing. 
And you yes, just, you I can't didn't explain do that. that. You we're can't we're do more that. talented than than the Browns. And I think we're more talented than Tennessee, also. And I, and I, I think know. they'll come out and play better today. Well, I I, I think we're going to win today. I do too. Uh, and I think we're going to win. Not because of the offense. I think we're going to win because of the defense. The defense continues to shine week after week. Uh, Tavon Young, is he a scratch today or is he playing, Dan? From what I can see, he's still listed as questionable. And uh, I guess that'll be a game time. And and Carr is beat up too, isn't he? Yes. uh, Let me just pull up the uh, injury report here for the uh, last update. The good thing about Cyrus Jones, it does give you a... Disaster situation if your quarterbacks are down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Ravens' uh, injury reports basically their entire defensive backfield. Tavon yeah. Young is questionable. Anthony Averett's obviously out. He's been out for a while. But Brandon Carr and Anthony Levine Sr., who's been the absolute been really good of that safety core, all really of them good. are questionable for today. But really? Spent- all of them? Yeah, they're all questionable. I, I, I think that uh, Carr, Levine, and Young are all expected I, to play. I think they'll play too. But, uh, Listen, the fact that they're all on the injury report is not a great way to start the week. No, it isn't. But, that you know, you can't go by that anymore. What do you think about the Dean Pease factor today? I think it's a plus factor for the Ravens. Me too. I think that the way he left the team, there's got to be some real bitterness there. Oh, I was thinking more about just the familiarity. Oh, what to I don't, I think, I don't think they disliked him. I don't know. I think I think there was a lot of frustration about the way that he called games by the end of his tenure with the Ravens. Right. It seemed like there were a lot of players who seemed very excited by the prospect of, of Martindale taking over. And I think there are a lot of players who are being well, very look, excited to If the Ravens get the ball with a chance to win at the end, this <laughs> might be the game we <laughs> right. win because Dean Pease is the coach right. of the other team. That's right. All right? Yeah. All right? He's the coach of the other team. He failed miserably. Down the wire with the Ravens. He's going to rush he, two guys. He was horrible. <laughs> and so he's going to give you 18 painful. seconds in the pocket. This, this is, is painful. The, well, it's true. This is the one that if we can't do a last-minute drive against the Dean Pease defense, all right? We're not going to need it. We might need it. This could be, I think it's going to be a close game. Barry, what do you think? Uh, I, yeah, I, I tell you, I... I have no idea anymore, you know, because you, you look at the Ravens and you say, well, they're, they're really good. Then the next thing you go, well, they don't have it together. They, they seem as, as they have been, as unpredictable from week to week. Do I think they could beat, uh, you know, the Titans? Yes. Without question, we're a better team than the Titans. But I'm, not, I, I'm on the fence whether or not we can pull off the game. So I'm going to say, yeah, got real reservations. Well, we're we're three and two. We win this game today. I'll be positive. We're four and two. That means you got eight games left. All right, and to get to uh, to get to ten wins, four and four. You well, know, we've got look. We've got well, six home no, games. You got to go six. We've got four. six home games still. Sixteen games. Six and four. <laughs> Listen, it's early. I'm sorry. You failed geometry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sure did. Algebra. Whatever. We've got we've got six home <laughs> games after. That this. was not that tough. No, no, that wasn't. That puts you. That puts him in about a yeah. five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember, remember when you were talking about me hosting sports maven yesterday? Yeah, I think uh, I disqualified myself. No, no, no. Well, that's, that's something. <laughs> go ahead, Carl. I didn't mean to interrupt. I think I think Flacco's wife becomes the MVP today because I think that if they're going to use Lamar Jackson. They're going to get more serious about it, and actually do. He's still. He probably is the most explosive player on the team, and and we haven't seen it yet, and they clearly want to see it. So if you're going you to make the effort, they're going to suddenly go with that. I think. Carl, that, I think, think they, they're going to unload them and let them suddenly play. I mean, if the quarterback's wife is perceptive enough to say, <laughs> you know, dude, look like you care. All right, I mean, we're right? running out of time. The, the team quick. has got to take a wake-up call from that and say, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. I think they're going to do it right today. There's going to be a couple of times where we see him for two or three pos- two or three plays in a row that work. and actually running an offense and making it actually difficult on the defense. And I think that will be the difference today. All right, 1916 Ravens. I think four field goals for uh, Ooh, we're back four to that. field goals <laughs> for Tucker. Three no for blocks. Su- three for suck up. One touchdown each. Carl, what do you see, Carl? Um, uh, uh, 31 to 13, Ravens. And Barry, last word. Uh, 27 21. All right. That Ra- will, Ravens. That will do it. And I uh, hope we're not eating crow next week. We are out of time. Oh. Wednesday. 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 Barry, I hope you can make it at 5 o'clock Wednesday. We're preempted next week because of the games in Europe. Uh, uh, if you can, you know, let Carl know. We'd love to have you Wednesday at 5 okay. o'clock before Turk Talk. Have a great day, everyone.